Hello everyone. Welcome to lesson number seven, grade nine mathematics. In our previous lesson, we were solving these algebraic e e equations. All right. So this was this lesson was um, requested by one of the learners. So that was that is what we did in the previous lesson. So you too can do the same if there's something that you want us to discuss. You can just drop me a, a text on WhatsApp or you can call me and then you can take a picture of the question that you want us to discuss and I can produce a video for you. Okay, so in today's lesson, we are now going to look at estimation. Okay, so we are going to look at how to run off decimal fraction. Okay, how to run off up to decimal places. Okay, so down here, I have written down the important tips that you need to remember when it comes to rounding off to decimal places. So when you round to decimal places, you only round off the numbers on the right of the decimal point, meaning that you only concentrate on the numbers after the decimal place or the decimal point. Okay. Now sometimes the number on the left can be affected. All right. Okay. We are going to see that in the example D below. Okay. So sometimes the numbers on the left can be affected but most of the time you only work with the numbers on the right of the decimal place now to write to, to run down so for, for you to round the number down so there the, the, the should be either zero one two any number below four then you run down meaning that you don't round up the number becomes less okay it's just like what you did in grade eight and seven okay so to round down you numbers like one up to zero up to four should be there Otherwise, if you want to round up, then a number must be five or more, okay? So, if, if you are asked to round off to one decimal place, it means there should be only one num number left after the decimal point. So, let's say you have something like this. Let's say you are given one, two, I mean 12.56. Uh, and then the question says, round off this number to one decimal place, all right? So, to round off to one decimal place, you need to have only one number after the decimal point so you ask yourself this number six is it greater than five yes it is so then it will be the answer will be 12.6 so you round up because the six is greater than five all right so two decimal places mean two numbers there should be only two numbers after the decimal point and then three decimal places mean there should be only three numbers after the decimal point. And then you have to be very careful when it comes to money, all right? Money should always be rounded off to two decimal places. Very, very important, important, sorry. Very, very important. Money should always be rounded off to decimal places, okay? All right, let us look at this for examples here, all right? R write the following as a decimal fraction, correct to, write the following decimal fractions correct to three decimal places. So write the following decimal fractions. Write the following S, yes, S decimal fractions, correct to three decimal places. Okay, now if you take your calculator, or if you know the fractions of 11, so one of 11 will give you zero point, let me just write it down. So this will be zero point, zero point nine, 0 0.09090909. 0 0 9, 0 9, 0 9. So this thing continues on like this 0909. 0 9. But now you are told to leave your answer to one decimal point. Okay? So what do you do? So you, to leave your answer to one decimal point, if you can just allow me to do this. Okay? So you count, you start counting here. Okay? So that's one decimal point, two decimal, and then three. So meaning that there should only be three digits after the decimal point. But so, we are going around of this zero using the nine. So since the nine is bigger than five, so the final answer will just be equal to zero point zero nine one okay so we just add a one on the zero and then the other numbers will just disappear okay because if you put them down there's not going to be three decimals three decimal places anymore 
okay so these are the three decimal places so we look at the last number it's zero so we use a nine because nine is bigger than five so we add a one on zero to become a one okay let's look at example number two or part b part b you have 2.11 times 10 exponent negative 2. now what is 10 negative exponent 2 so 10 negative exponent 2 is none other than just 0 0.01 so this is if you can allow me to do just this copy this you know come on paste so this is now 0 0.01 so this is just 10 exponent negative negative 2 and then you know that from when you multiply a number with a decimal number or when you divide this is like you are dividing this number by 100 so this decimal point is going to move all right so it's going to move two times so the answer will be 0 point zero two one one eight okay so but now the instruction says this answer should be written to three decimal places okay so we start counting from one two and three so we only want to have three numbers after the decimal point so now this one here is not bigger than five so we are going to round we're not going to round up we just the one we just say as it is because the one cannot add anything on this one so the final answer will be 0 0.021 so the final answer must have three numbers after the point remember our three decimal places means three numbers numbers after the decimal point and that is what we did in a and b okay so there should be only three numbers after the decimal point so this one here could not add is bigger it's less than five so you could not add anything on this number okay what about this one now this one we are dividing a 100 with 43 so here we are not gonna dance according to this because we are dealing with money okay so we're not gonna leave it to three decimal places we are gonna leave it to two decimal places because it's money money every time you deal with money and you're told to run off to two to decimal places you should leave your answer to two decimal places okay so what is 100 divided by 43 so 100 divided by 43 is uh, 2.32 i'm just going to write down the whole calculator display and then we're going to round it off uh 39 39 and 5 so three point i mean two point Three three two five five eight one three nine. Okay, so we want to write this to two decimal places. So we are going to I'm going to idealize it because we're not gonna dance according to this instruction because this is money. We are dealing with money. So this is remember this is money. So I'm gonna put it, the money sign there. Okay, the dollar sign. Okay, so you can say this is two dollars how many cents are this it, it doesn't make sense so that that's why you should always leave your your, your answer when you're dealing with money to two decimal places because you, you okay you can say two dollars and then what how many cents are this it doesn't make sense so that's why we are only going to have these two numbers but then this five will add some we're going to round up because uh, five is this number is five so the final answer is going to be so if you can just allow me to copy this again come on i don't want to retype and i think it would be wise if you can write down your your whole calculator display and then you can just remove what you don't want okay you're gonna be so it's two dollars 33 cents okay now it's making sense but this was not making sense two dollars three what part cents no it doesn't make sense but here now it's two dollars 33 cents okay so if you have to divide hundred dollars with 43 we're gonna get two dollars and 
33 cents. Right. Okay, let's go to part D. In part D, we have 9.999 divided by 10. We want to write that, write the answer to two, I mean to three decimal places. Okay, that is not money, there's no money sign involved. Okay, so we just round off to three decimal places. So 9.999 divided by 10. So we get, so the answer, so this one is very special. So I want you to pay attention to this one, 0 0.999, another 9. Okay, now the instruction says correct to three decimal places. Okay, so now this, we're only going to have three numbers after the decimal point. So we, go, we are going to use this 9, if I can color it red, so we're going to use the red 9 to round off all the others. Now if we do that, we are going to see magic. We are going to see magic. Let's see. All right. So, if you add a 1 to this 9, it becomes a 10. And if it becomes a 10, the 1 jumps here, it becomes a 10 as well, becomes a 0, and then a 10, and then the... So, let's start over. So, this one becomes a 10. So, the 1 plus 9 is 10. So, that the 0... It becomes a zero, and then the one jumps on this nine, all right, on the four, on the second, on the second nine, and then the second nine will become also ten, so zero will remain, and then the one jumps on this nine will also become a ten, and then the one jumps in front. So the answer will be one point zero zero zero. Okay, all right. Remember what I said here. In point number two, sometimes the number on the left of the decimal can be affected, okay, like in, exam, in part D. All right, so if, if you leave your answer like this, if you leave your answer just a one, I don't think you'll be correct, all right, because it says there should be two numbers after the decimal point, three numbers after the decimal point, okay? All right, so let's just do this again, so here, we needed to use this 9 to round off the 0, and we did that. We got a 1, so it's just 0 0.091. Then here we needed to use a 1 to round off this 1, so we, we round down because the, the 1 is not bigger than 5. And then here we needed to use this 5 to round up the 2, which became a 3. Okay. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something and um, I'll see you in the next video where we are going to talk about significant figures. All right. So please um, go through your textbook or watch YouTube videos about significant figures. All right.